good morning and welcome to a new video. And I'm here today at Triumph, the Triumph stand at Motorcycle Live. And we're here to talk about Triumph because this bike to my left is the one millionth bike built under the new regime since its return in 1990. quite some achievement and only uh, last week Carol and myself and a couple of friends did the full factory tour here at, uh, at Triumph and the visitor centre where all the uh, workers are stood there is just just to the right there and uh, really really interesting really interesting we'd done the tour some years ago and uh, you know things have moved on since then and Triumph obviously announced the bulk of the production was going to be made in Thailand so we weren't quite sure what to expect but uh, they were building standard Triumph Tigers when we went through on the production line on the rolling road it was an impressive setup actually doing them differently to how they were doing them before but Triumph Hinkley definitely building bikes and they definitely gave me the impression they intend to build more more at Hinkley and they weren't TFCs that were coming off the line. There were standard Triumph Tigers, 900, so uh, make of that what you want. Interestingly, after the tour, we bumped in to a gentleman called Dick Shepherd. And Dick Shepherd is responsible for this bike, which is on the stand next to the one millionth bike. And this is the very first 1901 prototype owned and restored by Dick Shepherd. Now I didn't realise what a major player Dick Shepherd is in the uh, museum at Triumph. Absolutely fantastic after the tour that, you know, he, he just offered to show us around the bikes and when I finished blabbering away here, I'll cut to that tour. Dick Shepherd is a really, really great guy and I hope you see when, when he takes us around the absolute love he's got for these bikes, these older bikes. Virtually every bike in that museum is owned by Dick. Blown to Triumph. For you to turn up and have a look around for free. Still over 650 men working at Hinkley. So for everybody that's saying, oh, I'm not buying a Triumph because it's not made in England. Well, quite a few of them are. And every bike you see on the Triumph range has been developed by somebody behind a wall in the hidden place within the factory. But highly recommend the tour, really interesting, the cafe is great, take a look. Okay, back to the tour. Yeah. Here's the very first Bonneville we ever built, and there's only one that colour, which is this one. Is it really? Now, this was this was built in June 1958. Yeah. But the Americans didn't like the colour. So the production colour in September 58 was tangerine and pearl grey. Right. But unfortunately the Americans changed their mind in April 1959 and, and they went back to a blue yeah. and a pearl grey, so it changed again. You know. Okay. That's the first one. That's the first one, very, very important. Okay. And did you say that the millionth bike is being unveiled at the... They've already unveiled it. It was on television. I, I thought it was a, they've got the entrance, haven't they, decked yeah. out with the millionth yeah. bike. Right. Well, what they're doing, the 1901, we're unveiling that tomorrow at the NEC, yeah. next to the one millionth bike. So. All right, OK. Yeah. Oh, I see. And that's then going to replace that one there. That's right, yeah. Right. This is what they call the bathtub. And that came from the fact, if you turn it upside down, it's like the old-fashioned bathtub, you see. Yeah. But what used to happen years ago... Yeah. Right. yeah. What happened years ago, people used to strip that off because they didn't like the look of the enclosed bag. So they're quite rare to find an original one. Yeah. yeah. So do you find bikes and do them up? Or do you oh, yeah, always yeah. look for bikes take We're always looking for bikes. And um, since, we, since we've done what we've done with Triumph here, we found that a lot of the rare stuff that we didn't know where it was, people are contacting the factory to get hold of me because I'm not one for social media. If, mm. you, don't, if you don't know me, you're never going to get hold of me. 
Did you own other bikes other than just Triumphs? No, just, just, just Triumphs. Triumphs. It's just Triumphs or Triumph related. Like, for instance, if you've got a Rickman frame that's got a Triumph engine, yeah. or you've got like a Cheney frame that's got a Triumph engine, because the Triumphs were always let down with their frame for racing. The engines were brilliant. You could yeah. tune them and get a really fast tune out of them, but the frames were a little bit twitchy. And mm. So lots of different companies made frames, you see. Yeah. So yeah, we've got like wasps, uh, River Triumph engine, this sort of thing. So when you said you perhaps lend them out film, a typical film might not want a gleaming looking like. Mm. They want it looking like whoever. Well, you know, what happened was. You uh, did you try Jason, and find Tati Olga? Jason, Jason Statham done a film called Mechanic Resurrection mm. and Triumphs bought a brand new bike for him. He said, I don't want that. He said, This is what I want. So we got a phone call on Sunday night from Triumph here and they said, Dick, have you got one of these? I said, Yeah, we got one of those. And it was a 66 TT Bonneville, which is a rare bike, you know. Um, can you get it over to uh, Bolivia Film Studios mm -hmm. next week? I said, well, we really need to take two bikes because whenever you're filming, a bike will break down. Yeah. So I said, yeah, I can get them ready for Wednesday. And we shipped them out to Bolivia and I went out there and um, we ended up building a bike for Jason Statham because he wanted to buy one of these bikes. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't sell my bikes, you know, we, we don't sell anything. So I said, but Ben's it's you and he's mm -hmm. so keen on bikes. We yeah. built him a bike you could ride on the road, very similar to this. Mm -hmm. so you don't That's sell good. them, you just charge them for the privilege of having it. No, not really. It's like, it's like Triumph. You were saying about mm. the, the film bikes. Well, I don't charge for the bikes being here. I don't charge for my time, but they'll give me um, you know, one of the Bond bikes. So, you know, you can't buy that. No one, no, else, no. No one else can no. get that no, bike. No. It's like Triumphs. And when when they, the I That's right. And when Triumphs um, supplied the engines for Motor 2, they built two prototype bikes. One they ran on the dyno, yep. and one yeah. they used for all the track testing. Yeah. Well, they gave me that track oh, testing. Really? Bike. Oh, that's you fabulous! That was the launch day that we came here, where we, we saw you on the stage with Steve Parrish. We've got Steve Parrish in the he, 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 one of them rode we one of them rode the Moto yeah. Two bike, and Gary some and, yeah, and, right. and we think uh, Steve Parrish rode the yeah, rode the other one. Number twelve. Number twelve. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We were stood outside watching Steve. him ride in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Whenever we go to the Classic TT, they do a celebrity parade on the Monday. Yeah. Well, we always let Steve ride one of my rare bikes, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he's really good at it. Yeah, you've been to the Classic TT, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, fascinating, yeah. Well, we're always in, where the big grandstand is, we're always behind there. That's Dick's right. spot. No one can have that. That's right. my spot. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, this is a This is a hurricane. Uh, it looks very unusual, doesn't it, compared to everything else? The, the styling. Well, the only thing with these are, they're a lovely looking bike, mm. but they're a terrible bike to ride. Really? If you go around a bend, you've got to keep the power on, mm. because if you don't, because of the rake and forks, it'll just flip you off, you know, you've got to be safe. Really? Yeah. I love the exhaust. <coughs> well, Triumph's made one of these similar. They made a Thunderbird Sport yeah. Yeah. about 1998, and they're still fetching really good money. These. These one time put up to about 35,000. Really? Um, well, the, the forks look quite narrow compared to a lot of the modern well, bikes now, don't they? Because the rake on them is quite long and they're a long... Slot. They're a long stanchion, aren't they? They crack, yeah. Really? They crack, so if you ever buy one, just check to make sure it's not... <laughs> <laughs> right, we yeah. buy one of those sort no. of bikes, to be honest. No. So we'll just come and look at yours. This is, yeah. the, um, this is one of the first bikes that John Law built. This is one of the Daytona Thousands. Yeah. And funny enough, this bike, the guy that had it, bought it brand new from Fowler's and um, he rang up reception one day and said, 
you know, did they want it in the museum? He'd been working abroad and got this by mm. low mileage. And they said, well, we haven't got a, this was maybe 10, 12 years ago. They said, we haven't got a museum, but I'm sure Dick would be interested in having it. So <laughs> <laughs> I went and see him and managed to buy it off him. So. Brilliant. We've got bikes at home, rare bikes that we still haven't managed to find mm. the registration numbers of them. Mm. Because right. I'm very... Well, it means a lot to me to get the original regs. I don't want yeah. an age-related number on, so we won't rebuild that bike mm. until we actually find the original. Yeah, yeah. so the um, might never get rebuilt. You know, mm. it's that bad. Anyway, this is uh, this is Triumph's first version of a superbike. Really, this is the T595, and I bought this brand new from all the motorcycles, mm. and uh, I rode it home, and uh, I think it's got about 30 mile on it. That's no. mm. Is that it? That's oh, it. Oh, wow. Um, the 1901, have you heard of a, um, you've heard of Blenheim Palace? Yeah. Well, Blenheim Palace every year hold a show called Salon Privy. And Salon Privy is the top um, car bike restoration show in Europe now. Yeah. It, it compares to Pebble Beach in America. They're on yeah. the same bar. And um, we put a bike in every year, and I think we've won it in the last seven years. I mean, oh, anyway, this year we put the 1901 bike in there. Yeah. And um, you've got to show the bike and start it with its history and everything. And they said, uh, the judges came around and they said, oh, Dick, can you start the bike? And I said, no, I'm sorry, I can't, because Triumphs want the first starting on it. Oh, we're going to have to knock your points. And I said, well, you do what you've got to do. <laughs> and we still won it. We won really? It. Without yeah. starting it? <laughs> we won the Duke of Marlborough Award. Right. And Obviously, he's the guy that owns Blenheim Palace. And yeah. I think I've won it three times now, the Duke of Marlborough Award. Uh, we've had to turn the plaque over, it's behind there, mm. because obviously, until the bike comes in here, we won't show it. But right. All right, okay. I think it's this cup here. This is the bike that holds the record of Brooklyn's uh, concrete circuit, the bank circuit oh, in yeah. Surrey. Yeah. Uh, it's the oldest race circuit in the world, 1905 they built We've it. We've been down to Brooklyn, so we've got like an We've been back uh, down, down a, a yeah. section of it, it's really bumpy, yeah. <laughs> really bumpy. Well, that's where I crashed the bike. Oh, is it? Really? Okay. We, we filmed there in, I think it was August, with the 1901. Unfortunately, I wasn't wearing a crash helmet, and they said, oh, we can't show it on television, Dick, you know, health and safety. Mate. Will you come back down? So anyway, I went back down, must be two weeks ago. Mm. Of course, the track's all covered in leaves. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. we know roughly where the potholes are. But <laughs> anyway, I went down, went up the banking to turn round. Of course, the 1901's got no clutch or <laughs> cut on the ignition. So you can't sort of slow it down with the clutch or disengage the, the engine. No, the brakes are terrible on it. So I went up the banking, done a loop round, yeah. come back down, went to turn. Of course, the back slid out on the leaves. So yeah. I pulled the bike back up, not got enough room to turn, and hit the bridge there. Oh, and yeah. rather than damage the bike, I leant forward to rub my shoulder on the concrete Take and he helped me. And uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, this bike still holds the 500 record at Brooklyn's at 118.02 miles an hour. And that's going to be on television next year. We filmed that back at Brooklyn's just right. recently. I mean, that's quick even by modern standards, isn't it? Yeah. It's fast. Yeah. Yeah. What's really. Uh, Ivan Wicksteed, who actually rode the bike and broke the record, uh, Dunlop said to him at the time, we suggest you don't use the 20 inch tyre because we think it's going to blow at the speed you want to do. Mm -hmm. And he tried a smaller tyre and found it wasn't stable, yeah. went back to the bigger tyre and still broke the record. Incredible guy he was. Still okay. holds this still holds a record. Yeah. Because the track's been broken up, it can never be yeah, made. Yeah, no, it can't be done again, can it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Amazing. Yeah. But on the, on the <coughs> Tiger 100 engine, which was the sports model, they did an optional bronze head. And these heads, they built about 200 of these uh, bronze heads, and they're very, very rare. Today, that head would probably fetch probably about £5,000. Just to yeah. fill in the head. But the only power that they gave the bike was they glowed in the dark. They didn't make much difference. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's a 5000 impressive. <laughs> But they are very, very rare head. Um, this is Ernie Lyons' uh, 1946 prototype Grand Prix that he won the Manx Grand Prix on. And 
he's an amazing character, he's the guy here. And we were rushing to get the pipe rebuilt for his 100th birthday, and we were going to take it over to Ireland and present the bike to him and get some pictures. Unfortunately, he died 14 days before he was 100. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? But anyway, um, what happened was, in 1946, the Nort was a lot quicker. So Ernie prayed for rain, but it didn't just rain, it literally lashed it down. So on the last lap, about three quarters before the end of the flag, he slid and hit the curb, and it broke the frame there. It literally broke the frame. And anyway, he pulled in, we've got all the pictures from it, he pulled in the winning enclosure, and the press interviewed him, they said, Ernie, didn't you notice the frame was broken, the handling of the bike? No, he said, I was sliding about the whole race, he said, I didn't notice anything. He said, the only thing I noticed was, the rev counter stopped working when it pulled the cable <laughs> off the joint. So, ah, all right, when the frame broke. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, right. amazing, amazing guy to win that, you know. Yeah. You know, we could look at these bikes so often. But we don't it's know, so we don't know the history. Yeah. yeah. This is a very famous bike. This is Mike Halewood. You've all heard of Mike yeah, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is Mike Halewood and Dan Shore is winning Thruxton 1958. Mm. And, um, and Mike's dad, Stan, um, there was a guy called Ginger Payne that was supposed to ride with Mike and, and Mike's dad said, no, he's not riding, I want Dan Shorey, because Dan Shorey was a fast little rider. And uh, as I say, this was the first twin ever to win the Fruxton 5 and a mile race. It had always been singles before him. But when we rebuilt this bike, Dan's still alive. And I took it round his house and I said, Dan, that's got the original racing Burgess silencers on that. He said, you start that up. He said, I'll tell you they're original. Mm. And I started it up. He went, yeah, they're the original. <laughs> he knew the sound because yeah. of the sound. Brilliant. But, uh, but yeah, this is, this, is, um, this is a very interesting point. Um, this is where the Daytona name come from. And in 1966, uh, Doug Hill was the works race manager at Triumph at Meriden. And he was tasked with building some race bikes to win Daytona because it was the ultimate race at the time. And America was a big market for Triumph. 80% of their production used to go to America. Literally, the night before the race, swept up all the bits of engine off the floor and built the last engine. But because Buddy hadn't qualified very well, we had to start from 46th on the grid. And he won Daytona from 46th on the grid. <laughs> this, is the, this is the last Daytona built at the old factory. This is what they call a T100D. Um, I think this is number 26. They built about 26. But again, there was lots of spares left over. Some people have built them out of spares. But this is the last registered Daytona ever built. This is my race bike. Uh, this is how I ended up with a son-in-law. All right. Well. This is a trick story. Um, one of the guys from the factory here called Matt Waldridge, whose grandfather used to help me a lot. He worked at the old Meriden factory. Without Harry, I could never have put the collection together because he had so much information of where a lot of the bikes went and everything. And I'd be speaking to him sometimes three, four times a week. You know, he really did help me. So anyway, um, Matt rode this in 2009 and at Donington Park he crashed and broke his leg so obviously at the time we were sponsored by New Holland so we had to put another rider on him and there was lots of guys in the paddock at the time wanted to ride for us because we always put a good bike together and um, anyway Leon um, he'd come and see us and he'd done European and I looked at what he'd done and he was a really good rider so Anyway, he came to ride for us and we got the bike on the podium and everything. And um, when we finished racing, I said, well, you better go home now. And he stayed and now he's with my youngest daughter. So, uh, this, this, is, this is the last Daytona they built at this factory to go with the old one. And there's even a story to this. I rang, I rang up Nick Bloor and I said, can I have the last uh, Daytona? And um, he said, oh, we've got a bit of a problem with it. He said, it's, it's, uh, it's in America. <laughs> so they had to get it back from America. This is one of the um, 765 Daytonas that they built for their Motor 2 bike. Um, these sold straight away. Yeah. Just to collect them. Yeah. This is um, Guy Martin. I saw, I saw the Guy Martin program when yeah. he did that. Mm. He's yeah. actually a really nice player. Yeah. He looks quite eccentric, but... 
Azo really not. Did you, did you hear the bit where he, like he's told him that the reason that's got a padded seat is because Steve McQueen had piles? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, that wasn't filmed when I said that. So when we got over to the bike, and, I, and he said, can I sit there? I said, you can ride it if you like. So he says, is that why it, the reason he's got a padded seat because Steve McQueen had piles? He said, no, I think he had a bad back guy because he's got two. <laughs> and he asked it three times. <laughs> Oh, this, this is quite from um, Doctor Who, right. yeah. which is quite interesting. But this was when we used to buy the bikes before wow. the museum was here. So we used to buy all the film bikes because mm -hmm. otherwise they'd just put it back to a road bike sometimes and sell them off. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, does anyone want to get a picture set on this bike? I'd, I'd, I'd love to. We'll to. Want to get a picture on that one, yes. You, oh. <laughs> Let me get my phone in. This is one bike. This is the actual one that done these stunts. The other two, the other two bikes, the other two bikes, there was another solo triumph, and then there was one on the sidecar. They were built by Bud. In the next, uh, a few months, they were built by Bud. And in the next few months, on the video screen here, we're going to tell the whole thing. Oh, Bill, careful. Ready on, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> the stunt shot. That's Tim Gibbs. Tim Gibbs was the actual other stunt man. If you watch the film, when McQueen puts the wire across the road and has the German off the bike, that's Tim Gibbs. He's still alive. I brought him over from New Zealand and we done a talk at the Apollo Theatre in London uh, with Dan Snow. But the funny thing about it was, the Germans never painted anything in the Second World War green. Right. And yeah. what was, when Bud contacted Ken to get him to build a bike, he told him it was a British prisoner of war field, but he forgot to tell him that the Germans didn't paint their stuff battleship green, sorry, didn't paint their stuff green. So Ken went down to the local army barracks, got some camouflage paint. It's actually changed his colour, this bike. If you turn the light off, it goes black. <laughs> and with the sun it goes bright green, it's really unusual colour. And um, we've got film from Tim Gibbs' wife. She was taking on the set when we were doing the filming. And um, the Queen and Tim Gibbs are painting the other bikes with a brush. <laughs> so we know that the bike was definitely used in the film as green. And a good job it was, because when you watch the film you can see it's this bike, not the other bike. No. Otherwise, there could have been some confusion over mm -hmm. that. Do you ever let anybody ride? I think, I think yeah. well, when we were here, did you let Henry Cole have a, have yeah. a, have a go on it? Yeah. He said he had a go. Um, yeah. 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 He nearly dropped it. Yeah, he said he, he, said he got yeah. into trouble, yeah. you know, when he, he was, was here. We couldn't so. get him off it. He yeah. was ah. going up around the fields. Up yeah. There. yeah. What, we, what, what I always do is, like, when people say, can I sit on it? It's all set up. We yeah. well, can ride it if you like. Bit, wow, you know. <laughs> but that was all. Anyway, um, we took the bike down to the fence down there. Yeah. And, um, Henry said, Oh, can I sit on it? I said, You can ride it if you like. Well, anyway, all the management upstairs were looking out the window, the floors, and everything. Mm. And Henry's got on the bike, and he's, it's quite a powerful bike. He'd give it a handful, because <laughs> the bike slid around. <laughs> and there was a massive sigh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And they thought, shit, this is going to cost you money. <laughs>